Welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to understand about how to write parameterized tests in M unit. What do I mean by parameterization? Let me tell you. Till now, what we have done is we have written test cases for our flows. In our test cases, what we are doing before calling the flow using flow reference, we are setting the event with some data and we are calling the flow, flow using flow reference and then we are asserting. But whenever we are setting the input data, now here I have externalized it to this file. So whenever we are setting input data, we are giving only input as some hard coded value ID2. And then whenever we are asserting responses, we are asserting the response when the ID is 2. But what if I want to write various cases? I might want to pass a different input value and uh, check whether I am getting the correct value for that input. So maybe I want to write multiple tests uh, for a product with ID which is existing and which is not existing and maybe various cases I want to write. So the in the input data, I don't want to hard code the values. Maybe I want different inputs to be given to the test and I also wanted to assert for that. So let us see what do I mean. I have already written some test cases. Let me show you simple one. I am working on this M unit parameterized start flow. The flow is same and see the test case. Here in the set test case, in set event, right now I have written the attributes inline only. I didn't externalize. But instead of hard coding the value of brand, I am right now trying to assert based on the brand. All right. So instead of hard coding the brand, I am using mule colon colon p. So this brand is a parameter which it expects during the runtime. Similarly, whenever actually I give a request for my flow using brand, first of all, let us see by running it. So let us run it. Whenever I give query parameter brand, it will go into this flow. Okay. I got an error. What is it? Build failure. What is it saying? Why? Um, maybe I will run again. Fine. Now I think it is starting. Fine. Um, I wanted to check what will happen whenever I pass a query parameter brand. So it will go to get products by brand. It is firing a query on product table based on brand. But in my database for one brand, there might be multiple products based on the brand. Let me go here. See for Apple, how many products are there? Two. For HP brand, there is only one product. So, um, I wanted to give different brands and I want to check how many products I am getting. Okay. Now, before invoking the flow in my test in the set event, I am passing an attribute called as brand. Okay. So, I guess now my application has been started. I will give a request using brand is equals to apple okay see i got an array of size two there are two products with brand apple if i give hp i'll get only one product so i want to write assertions accordingly
In my assertion also, what I have done is, and checking payload must have size. What is the size? Again, I am parameterizing. I'm not hard coding the size, I'm parameterizing. I am expecting a parameter called as size. Okay, how to pass these parameters in your tests? Very simple. You have to go to global elements and in your global element, there will be mule configuration, which is by default added. You have to edit it. Then here you have to write parameterizations. I can write plus. I'll give the value brand HP. For brand HP, I want to give some parameters. I'll select this. I will add parameter name is brand. And the value I want to give is HP. So again, I want to give one more size. I want to give value is one because whenever I gave a request actually for brand HP, I'm expecting an array of size one. So I've given one parameter. So here you can see for this brand I passed HP. And here I'm expecting size for this I passed one. So when brand is HP, um, I'm configuring size is one. Okay, I want to give one more parameter for brand Apple. So again here, I'll click on plus. I will write any name, brand Apple I'll give. And for this again, see for HP I gave these two. For this also, I will give uh, brand as Apple. And one more parameter, size. I know that according to my database, there are two Apple products. So I'll give sizes two. Okay. So now let me run this. Oh, I'm in the global elements. I'm still getting an error. Let me check for brand HP reserve for brand Apple. Yes. Fine. No issues. I will save it. It is giving us the error. Let me go to XML, just add a space and save it. It will be recompiled. So the errors should go off. Still, it is showing error. What is the error? I don't see any error. Uh, let me see the problems. It is showing two errors. Element is not allowed to be repeated. Okay. <laughs> So there's a bug again. Let me go to XML and check. Oh, see here, uh, there are two parameter, multiple parameterization tags automatically written. So this parameterization tag is having only one parameter, brand HP. I will remove it. Uh, here again, you're having two, brand HP, brand Apple. Again, copied. So actually, this is a known bug in any point studio. Uh, whenever we add parameters, automatically it is adding one more tag. Maybe they will fix it. Okay. So I have manually removed it from XML. Now, if you see, um, I have same values, brand HP, brand Apple. Okay. Now, let me run this test case. Here, are how many cases I have? Only one. Now I will try to run this, just observe. Oh, I don't need to run the actual application when I'm running a uh, test case, I'm stopping it. Now let me run this test. Observe what will happen under M unit. You can see, I'll maximize it. There are two cases. It appears like two cases, one for brand HP, one for brand Apple. So they are not yet executed. Still, it is running. Let us wait until it succeeds. 
yeah for brand apple it is success and for brand hp let us see still it is running for this parameter also one more test is executed yeah for two cases for hp brand input and apple brand input two cases actually i have only one case for this there are two parameters i configured that means two test cases for brand hp and apple so let me go here to global elements and i will edit for apple i will say that the size of apple it will be one actually it is two but what will happen if i say the size is one okay again there is an error maybe the xml is not properly generated I have to remove this m unit parameterizations. There's only one m unit parameterizations. Even for brand apple, I'm specifying the size as one. So when input attribute brand is apple, I'm asserting that the payload must have a size of one only. It will fail. Let me run this. So for HP, it should be successful. For brand Apple, it should be a failure. Let us see the test case. So there are two cases again launched. They are not yet executed. Okay, let us wait. For brand HP, it should pass. For brand Apple, the test case should fail. So this is, yep, it failed, see, expected size one, but actually two. And for brand HP, this passed, right? So by using parameterizations, what you can do, you can execute the same scenario for multiple inputs, inputs by passing them as parameters. And you can also assert accordingly, right? So that's about parameterization. Now you understood. In next lecture, we'll see few more things like how to write test cases for error scenarios. Okay, what you can do is now you can go to my GitHub and go to day one and day twenty two M unit folder. Open this M unit basics. You have already completed up to step two. Now you go to page number ten, step three, and uh, complete the rest of the document. Make sure that you complete this exercise before you go to the next video. See you next video.